everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodson. Today we're looking at part two from a tutorial that came out earlier this week on creating 3D tube text. I'll probably fade in some examples of what I'm talking about somewhere right around here so you can get an idea of what was created in that tutorial. If you haven't checked out that video, boom, I just popped the link to it right up there in the corner of the video. I'll also throw a, a link down in the description of the video as well. You might want to check that video out just for the simple fact that it's going to lay the groundwork for what we're going to do here. This is like a more advanced version of that, but also I have a free gradient download pack over there of additional like color samplers. You're going to see how we use those color samplers here and why they are kind of important. Um, it certainly is just going to make your life a little bit easier if you go ahead and download those gradients because um, you'll just have them and they're free and, you know, yeah, you can download them. Um, but hey, let's check this out. So here uh, on my screen, you can see I've got this, a bunch of random shapes and colors and things. And then this 3D text uh, spelling out the word hello. But not only do we have the word hello, we have some other interesting uh, effects. Look at this. It's like a ribbed gradient effect. So cool. It's like a big gel ribbed gradient effect and, and complex gradient effect and kind of a spinning gradient and all all sorts of different crazy three-dimensional effects that kind of looks like spaghetti a little bit, right? Um, we are going to talk about how to create a bunch of different effects here in Photoshop. Um, and we're going to start over here in this new document. Now, see this document? See all these sort of color samplers I've created? This I'm going to call this samplers. You can go... You can download this PSD, this exact PSD for free. Link is down in the description. Not only can you get the gradients in the older or the part one of this tutorial, I'm going to give you this PSD, all of these colors and shapes from which you can sample that I'm going to use and sample right now in this tutorial so you see how they work. Um, yeah, you can get it for free. It's the, the entire PSD. You can download it, open it up, and follow right along exactly with me right here, right now, right this minute. All that good stuff. So how do we use this? Well, before we do anything, I'm just going to show you how we can create like a, a really bulbous letter Z. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the rectangle tool here, and I'm going to set the rectangle to draw a path. Now I'm going to hold down, or I'm going to start drawing a, rec uh, a rectangle, and I'm going to hold down the, let the, the letter, the key shift, and I'm going to drag out a square about that big, and then I'm going to let go, collapse my properties panel, and I'm going to grab my direct selection tool. Now I'm going to drag a, a selection across sort of the center gut area of this uh, square, and I'm going to hit the delete key. And Photoshop's going to say, hey, look, this operation is going to turn a live path into a regular path. Are you sure? To which I'm going to answer with a resounding yes. So I'm going to hit yes. And you can see it just gets rid of the two vertical paths. So I have two horizontal parallel paths. Now I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to click on this anchor point. Hey, look at that. I got a path coming out of it now. And I'm going to connect it to this anchor point here. And I have a nice squared off, very symmetrical letter Z. Go to my paths panel, double click on this work path, name it Z, hit enter or return. I've got the letter Z. I'm going to grab the path selection tool and I'm going to drag this letter Z down over right about here. Now I'm going to come back over here and we need to create a new layer. So I'm going to go new layer. I'm going to name this letter Z. And all I want to do is create a very, uh, very colorful, very sort of 3D, pseudo 3D looking Z. Uh, so if again, if you haven't done this with me before, I'm doing this just so we can kind of go over really quickly how all of this works. We're going to grab the mixer brush tool. We make sure we're working with dry, heavy load. That means wetness is zero. Load is 100%. See that? And we're also going to make sure we tick on sample all layers. Now, because we have sample all layers ticked on, when we go ahead and sample, we're going to sample this green right here. When we sample that, we need to shut off our dark blue color fill background layer. Uh, so I'm going to make my uh, green brush nice and large, hold down alter option, sample that green. Look at that up in our little color thumbnail. It's saying you got the green sphere and no other color around it. So you're only going to be painting with that green sphere. Beautiful. I think 300 pixels is pretty good. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going to go 400. Let's live dangerously. And I'm going to go over to paths. I'm going to right click on this path. Remember, we're working on a blank layer here. I'm going to right click on the Z path, choose stroke path, choose mixer brush tool. Do not check on simulate pressure. We want that to be shut off and hit OK. And look at this. We're going to get a really big, really kind of three dimensional looking letter Z plastered right there. Wablam over our dark blue background. So we created the letter Z out of a path and we stroked it using the mixer brush tool and it gives us this really cool effect. Well, 
that was all kind of stuff that we covered in part one. Um, barring, I didn't really show you how to create the letter Z out of a path. Um, but before we go on and really get into the nitty gritty here, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com. It's all about how to retouch photos in Photoshop. Even if you're just a graphic designer, you might not do a lot of retouching. There's a ton of Photoshop techniques, trips, tricks, tips, all kinds of stuff like that that you'll learn. You will also support tutvid.com by picking up a copy of that course. Tons and tons of people have picked it up. I don't think anybody has returned it or said, hey, I hate what you're selling here um, out of everybody that's picked it up. So I think that's pretty good. It might be like a five-star rating if it was Amazon.com. I don't know. Five stars usually means it's kind of spammy. I'll go four and a half stars and be a little humble about it. Um, but if you pick up a copy of the course, it just supports what we're doing here. Thank you so much if you pick up a copy. If not, this video is still free. Let's get back to it. Uh, so we created this letter Z, and uh, we, you know, it's based on the path and all that good stuff. I'm going to shut that layer off. I'm going to create a new layer, and here is where things are going to get interesting. I have all these different shapes. And by the way, how did I create these shapes? Well, I just went to the custom shape tool, and you can see you've got all these different shapes here. If you don't have them, uh, select this little cogwheel, this little flyout menu here. And uh, from the flyout menu, I just loaded in all the shapes. And, you know, if we go with something like this multi-sided star or just the regular old star, something like that, you would just draw uh, using either pixels or shape. You know, you can go with like shape and then from the fill, you go with a gradient. And this is where you can use my gradient packs that I'm that are available as a free download in the part one video and go with like a pink or something. So there's light pink at the top, dark pink at the bottom. And voila, we have yet another color option that uh, from which we can sample. And I could just take this above my samplers layer, hit command or control E to merge it down into my samplers layer and everything is organized nicely there all right let's create a new layer here and let's try um let's just go with like this big greenish tealish purplish multi-sided star option here so i'm going to grab my mixing brush tool remember we want to shut off our background layer and i want to make sure my brush is a little bit bigger than the shape or the colors which we are selecting hold down my alter option key click that if we look at our sampler, yep, we've grabbed that star. Um, and if I come over here and I just start painting, let me just make sure I don't have any shape dynamics or anything turned on. I don't. If I just start painting, you can see I get this really cool, uh, just three-dimensional, uh, I don't know how to describe it type effect. It's really kind of interesting. Um, and it, it looks extra three-dimensional because it almost looks like it has these colored ribs coming out of the side. That's really, really cool. Uh, one of the other things we can do is we can, I'll make my brush a little bigger here, just use my square bracket keys, by the way, to make the brush bigger or smaller I can select this one and I can just paint with you know with that shape and those colors within that shape uh, another trick you can make your brush much smaller right and then you just get a much smaller version of whatever it is you want to paint uh, you can make your brush you know huge and you get a really really large version of whatever it is you want to paint which is very CPU intensive another thing you can do a cool little trick with this you can make your brush really small and only sample a portion of a shape so like I could just grab this top corner of this star look at up here uh, up here in the area where it's telling us that we uh, uh, that we sampled, right? We're just grabbing the top part of this teal shape. And when we paint with it, we get a radically different effect. Really cool, but very, very different. Uh, so let me just undo that stuff. Uh, we could do the same thing here with this little shape. I could make it, you know, much smaller. I can sample like the top bit and we just get this really cool, I don't know how to describe it. It's just really, really neat uh, type effect. You can do the same thing with, you know, any of these. You can do it with one of the circles here. We can just grab like the top corner of that circle and we get kind of this oblong looking um, shape tube that we're, we're creating here. So really, really neat stuff that you can do when you go in and begin playing with uh, when you begin playing with different shapes and selecting different portions of different shapes, uh, you can get a lot of really, really cool effects, um, as you can see. And the sky really is uh, the limit when it comes to this. See, we select the top port part of the star. We get kind of the shelf going that way. We select the bottom part of the star. We get a totally different looking uh, effect. We select different part of the star, different effect, the, the straight up bottom of the star. So all kinds of really, really neat stuff that you can do um, just by creating different types of shapes and sampling portions of different types of shapes and of course applying different gradients and different colors to those shapes you begin to get just like thousands and thousands of different mixtures and combinations of shapes that you can create. Now let's go ahead and um, let, let's use the freeform pen tool like we did over in part one of this tutorial. Freeform pen tool and again up in this little cog wheel we want to make sure curve fit is set to 10 pixels and let's write out the letter M and try to apply something to this. So I'm going to try to create a somewhat fancy M here. Let's go like eh, whoops I'm going to go I'm going to go M. So something like that. I don't know. It's not perfect, but it's 
it's a thing. Uh, there we go, and I got a couple little flat spots. I'm going to go hit the letter A, and I'm going to make sure that I'm using my direct selection tool. I cover how to do all this stuff in part one, so I'm going to kind of just speed through it here. I'm going to just sort of straighten that out, and I'm going to kind of sort of straighten that out. Cool. We clean that up a little bit. Yeah, this doesn't need to be perfect at all. Maybe I'll just kind of straighten this little area out a little bit as well. Kind of something like that. All right, cool. Close enough. Down here is going to be a mess if we don't clean this up, though. Let me just... Let me just bend this curve a little bit. So we have a little something. It's going to look a little weird, but not as weird as it would have if I hadn't cleaned it up a little bit. All right, now that we have this path, I'm going to double click to just save this as the letter M. And let's just go and apply something to this. So I'm going to drag my path up. I'm using just the, the full path selection tool. That's the black arrow. And I can select the path and move it around. I'm going to move it up so it's kind of in the middle of our working area. Go back to my layers. I'm up on a blank layer. Um, now because we're going to be sampling a color, let's shut off our background layer here. And let's just, with our uh, with our mixer brush, let's grab, let's grab like this shape here because see it's hollow in the center let's see what that looks like make our brush a bit bigger and just alt or option click and you can see here yep we've sampled that looks great i need to make my brush a little bit smaller something around like 175 will probably look good for the m go paths right click choose stroke path with the mixer brush tool no simulate pressure hit okay and let's see what we get here you can see that we get this crazy iteration of the letter m where we have these hollow ends. But most importantly, just so quickly and so effortlessly, we create this very 3D, it like multifaceted 3D text. So cool, it looks so neat. And using a technique like this, in fact, let's just shut that layer off. Let's just name that layer M. Let's create a new layer here and, and let's try to create a, uh, a, a sort of a spiraling circle type 3D effect. This is gonna be kind of cool here. Let's grab the ellipse tool right here and we're going to just create a path. I'm gonna drag out a circle, hold down my shift key, and let's make the circle about that big, all right? Close my properties panel, I don't need that. Go to our paths panel, double click, and let's just name this path O, because it's just, hey, a big circle. And here on this layer, again, we need to shut off our background color fill layer, and we're going to sample, let's sample this green and blue multi-sided star effect right there. Hold down alter option, sample that. Yep, we got it up there. Uh, and what I wanna do, let me make this a little bit smaller, Something right around 175 pixels for our brush head. And by the way, I like to keep hardness cranked up to 100%. It just tends to work better. Go back to paths, right click, stroke that path, mixer brush tool, hit OK, and look at this. Isn't that so cool? Of course, the only problem here is we can see that big chunk of whatever it is there, the end of the path, if you will. We want to cover that up. So here is how I've found this works best. What I do is I take the path. I grab my path selection tool, I select the path, and I go edit, tra uh, free transform path, and we're just simply going to take and rotate the path, kind of like that. I want my top point, so it's going to say this operation is going to turn a live shape into a regular path, yep, continue, I don't care. That top path where I know the last bit of brush is going to end up just gets tilted over here a little bit. We don't want to take it too far. And what we'll do is create a second layer here, and I'm going to stroke this path again, right click, stroke path with, you guessed it, mixer brush tool, hit OK. And you're going to see this moves that ending point right to there. Well, what we can do at this point is we take this top O, let's just deselect that path. We take this top O, we add a layer mask, and we grab our regular brush tool, a nice big soft brush, probably not that big, I'm going to scale down my brush a little bit. I'm painting with the color black, and we're simply going to paint that uh, that ending cap away. So that's all we did. And you get a nice blended, you know, spiraling 3D colored circle. Uh, really pretty cool. You can select both the layers, select the top layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer, command or control G to group them up and name this layer, I don't know, O or something. And you get this really cool sort of three dimensional colored circle effect uh, using this uh, creation effect. There's, there's, there's just so much you can do uh, with this technique. But wait, would you believe it? That's still not it. There's still a little bit more that you can do here. And this is part of the reason why I broke this up into part one, part two, because, you know, 40 minutes or 50 minutes of going over this would be pretty boring watching it all together. It's a little bit more palatable breaking it up over a couple days. But these are going to be effects that you're going to be glad you know how to do, to do this stuff because it's just so interesting. It's so different. There's not a lot of people who are doing it. Um, so if you do it, your, your work is probably going to stick out a little bit. You'll have some stuff that people say, hey, that's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. I'll check out more of your work or I'll give you a job or something. I don't know. Um, but here, check this out. I am going to create another new layer. Yet another new layer. I know. I'm going to shut off that O layer group that we just created. 
And we're going to name this layer uh, Texture, because check this out. If I go back to the mixer brush here, and I shut off my background layer, and let's just, I don't know, let's grab this orange kind of, you know, bizarre roundy star type shape here and if I if I load that onto my brush and I open up my brush settings here and I go to like shape dynamics and I just increase size jitter right and uh, maybe I won't even I'll, I'll shut pen pressure off and I'll just grab my my Wacom tablet here and I'm just going to begin painting you can see all right, doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look like much is changing. Um, there's really not that much going on. What if I increase angle jitter? Mm, now I can see down here in my preview, it's not really going to do much. Let's shut off control. Eh, still probably not going to do much of anything. What about roundness jitter? All right, now that's going to change some stuff. And look at that. I'm, I'm getting this effect, but it's got all these rough edges, got all these rough, ragged edges. That looks pretty cool. Uh, interesting. Uh, what if I change control here to pen pressure? Then I can I can really create small or large uh, effects as I'm painting out uh, my uh, my wonky looking 3D path. Uh, depending on how much I'm pressing or not pressing on my uh, tablet, I'm going to shut that off though. We can also turn on scattering. This is kind of interesting, and just scatter it you know a little bit. You don't want to go too much. Um, I'm not even going to pu push count or count jitter up. I'm just going to scatter about 50%. I, I think I'll like that. Um, I'll come over to brush tip shape. I'm not going to touch that quite yet. And you can see when I do this, now we get a really interesting effect where it's just taking what looks like a plethora of 3D shapes and just like spraying them all over the place. That's really neat. Um, in fact, you can increase spacing a little bit and you could just see... Well, you can see when you increase spacing, it really kind of looks bad. So we really don't want to increase spacing. You don't want to increase spacing, and you get a really cool kind of piled up color effect. And if we apply this to a path, let's go back to our paths here, and let's just choose the simple sort of C path, if you will. I'm going to select the path and move it over here just so we know what's going on. Or up on a blank layer. Yes, we are. I'm going to go to that path. I'm going to right-click, and all we need to do is stroke path, uh, mixer brush tool, hit OK. And you can see we get this really, really interesting effect. Um, it's just, it's so different. It's so, I don't know how to describe it. It's three-dimensional. It's scattered and broken and semi-transparent and abstract and all kinds of craziness. It's just really, really cool. There's just so much you can do with this effect. It's crazy mixer brush tool, mixing it with effects and jitters and scattering in the brushes panel, applying it to paths, uh, using the freeform pen tool and writing your own text or hijacking paths from text like we talked about in part one. So many different uh, things you can do with this technique every one of them unique in its own sort of way and everyone totally in your control. Ah. Oh. You're just, you're gonna love it. You're absolutely gonna love it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you create something cool using any of these effects, tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you create. I'll comment, I'll like, as long as it's good enough and I'm kind of interested, but most of the stuff I am. Um, so I would love to see what you guys create uh, if it's something that you're really interested in. Um, yeah, it would just be really cool. If you enjoyed this video, Go ahead and leave a little like on the video here on YouTube. Drop a comment below if you feel so inclined. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel, youtube.com slash tutvid. Uh, you'll never miss another video in the future, which is good, I think, at least. Um, yeah, and that's it. So for creating this advanced 3D tube text, but really so much more than just regular old tube text, all kinds of scattering going all over the place and all kinds of different shapes and abstract artwork, colors, gradients, radio, linear, all different directions, everything that you would want and more. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, I'll catch you in the next one.